Slovakia and the Slovakia ring for the remainder of the round five out of six of the 2021 Asset Cup Series. We've done the Saturday's racing program and now it is time to, sh to show and, and watch the Sunday's races. And just like yesterday, we will start today's program with the Renault Twingo Cup race number two. And uh, it is going to be a farewell story for us, for the Renault Twingo, because they are not running them in two weeks' time in Brno. So for us, this is going to be a little goodbye. A bit of a shame, really, because this is a really, really fun racing to watch. But anyway, let's enjoy it and uh, uh, look forward to uh, next places in the future. So Luca Glaser, we are watching him now on the starting grid. He won the race yesterday and uh, maximized his chances as goes with uh, the title title uh, title battle because he came to Slovakia with a bit of a gap to the championship leader Nick Stefančić however things played into his hands he won the race and uh, Nick Stefančić he didn't have that same sort of luck uh, if anything quite the opposite can be said about him because he was actually collected in the first lap crash sorry first corner crash uh, halfway through the race um, that means that Nick Stefančić did not score any points yesterday. And that also means that Nick Stefančić remains at his 105 points in his points tally. Luka Glaser closed that gap right down and uh, he has got 98 points in his name. That means a seven point difference going into the last race as goes for the Asset Cup Series part of the championship. The Renault Twingos will then go on to race also somewhere else, but for the Asset Cup Series, this is the last race of this season. So hello and welcome again. My name is Pavel Fabri. I will be your commentator for the day. And uh, let's then watch the Renault Twingo Cup race number two. As already mentioned, Nick Stefančić remains in the championship lead. Uh, he is also one of the juniors that we have in the starting field. And uh, he's got 105 points to his name, as already mentioned. Luka Glaser, seven points down on him. Also, Mihailo Mladenovic uh, was uh, successful yesterday. Uh, sorry, Matej Ivanusha was actually uh, successful yesterday. And Matej Ivanusha scored well. Uh, claimed 12 points yesterday and uh, moved himself up the order. Mihailo Mladenovic there as well, Urbani Lovchan, David Malinovsky and so on and so on. The Renault Twingos are already on their way to the formation lap. It is the longest track in this season's championship, 5.9 kilometers, 14 turns here in Slovakia and it is a flat, wide, fast track. Maybe not the natural habitat for the Renault Twingos. These are not the fastest of cars, and uh, maybe they, they would be a little more at home uh, somewhere with the more twisty uh, and tight tracks. But anyway, what is always uh, fun to watch and what is always very strong uh, in the racing craft, actually, here in Renault Twingos, is something called bump drafting. Because, you know, normally uh, when two cars follow each other, on a racing track they can uh, use something called the slipstream that means that uh, the car in front is actually cutting through the air for you and uh, that of course then means for you if you are the following car that uh, the drag on your car is not as strong and you can reach a higher top speed and actually pull yourself kind of pull yourself in and closer to the car ahead uh, something similar we see in Renault Twingos but not quite the same thing uh, these drivers really race physically, bumper on bumper, and literally push each other along straights. And uh, that's always great fun to watch, so uh, we'll see definitely more of that in this race. This is the tighter and twistier bit of track, the second sector, the infield section, if you will. Uh, lots of uh, interesting and actually difficult bends. For example, this one, that's turn six. and. Uh, that's notoriously difficult to break into correctly because basically you're having to break with your front wheels uh, locked in certain steering angle and uh, when you are in a, in a front wheel drive car then you're asking uh, quite too much 
from your from uh, from the wheels because they have to be turning, they have to be braking, they have to be cornering, braking, everything at the same time. So coming to the limit of adhesion uh, is always so much easier. So to make mistake is always so much easier. Let's actually see uh, in which order the drivers will start the, this race. Yesterday's winner, Luka Glaser, on pole position and alongside him, Mihailo Milenkovic, on row number two, Luka Grm and Matej Ivanusha, P5, that's David Stušek, and P6, Aleš Buzga, in seventh, Urban Jelovčan, in eighth, Tom Grünfeld, in ninth, Rok Cerar, and to top off the top ten is uh, then the Dejan Krofl, Behind them, Bojan Šemé, Dejan Robida, Andrea Benini, Rožle Jereb, Sabol Člantoš, yesterday's pole sitter. He was in the mix and in the fight for the victory for a long time, but then actually also got involved in the first corner crash and uh, finished uh, further down the order. So we have him in 15th. Behind him, Nate Verhovets, Matea Soldat, Nick Stefančić, the championship leader, going into the last race. That will be definitely crucial for him. He's only 18th on the grid, but anything, absolutely anything is possible. Well, everything is possible in motorsport. That's a general saying, uh, but in Renault Twingo racing, even more than that is actually possible. Uh, and uh, it's uh, not, uh, so rare to see that even a driver that's uh, at the at the back of a top 10 for example entering the last lap on the race still has a pretty real chance to win it so p18 not the end of the world for nick stefancic but definitely a lot of work for him to do in this race 25 minutes ahead of us and 5.9 kilometer racetrack to play at So the red lights are on, and the red lights are off, and away we go. Luka Glaser from pole position, trying to hold on to the first place. It will take a bit of time before the cars reach the turn one. And the two trains of cars gradually getting closer and closer to one another, and mixing up now as they approach the first corner of the track. Luka Glaser still holding on to the first place, not really letting anybody alongside even so Mihailo Milenkovic staying in second all drivers seem to be through with no problems there and we will definitely be watching Nick Stefancic who started from P18 and has all the hard work ahead of him Luka Glaser in the lead from uh, Mihailo Milenkovic. Mati Ivanusha had a good start and he moved himself up to P3 in his yellow Twingo. And this is the bump drafting I was talking about already. Drivers pushing each other bumper on bumper. You'll notice that after yesterday's racing, not all the cars have the bumpers in the colors that they should have. Some of them had to, let's say, borrow some parts from their colleagues and from their mates. Luka Glaser still remaining in the lead. Now having a little wider uh, exit from uh, the difficult turn three. That's the, let's say, first really heartbreaking point on the track. And Maciej Ivanusha, he has now dealt with Mihailo Milenkovic and he's up to second, having started fourth. And he's now literally pushing Luka Glaser for the race lead. The car number 333 there down in fourth, that's Luka Grm. And behind him, David Stušek in his uh, red Twingo. Urbani Lovchan in that rusty liveried Twingo. He moved himself up from seventh to sixth. And behind him in that uh, high vis orange Twingo is Rok Cerar, but he's now lost a place, I believe, to Aleš Buzga. So this is the fight for B1. Luka Glaser in the lead having to defend from Matej Ivanusha there's also the uh, let's say medical car following the whole field for the first lap as is always usual for if there's a big crash on the opening lap which uh, is always more likely than in any other lap that's why the medical car follows the whole field for the first lap just to be at the scene of a, of a potential crash as fast 
as it possibly can be. And now lots of pushing. Matej Ivanusha around the outside into the last corner and into the first place he goes. He has now overtaken Luka Glazer and Matej Ivanusha just like yesterday back in the lead of the race. He spent probably the most laps in the lead yesterday but then in the end didn't win. And now Luka Glazer is definitely going to fight back. There is pushing along the start and finish straight. They are trying to get away from the rest of the pack. Behind them, Luka Grem in third. There is also Mihailo Milenkovic. And round the outside, that is David Stushek. And he's trying to move himself forwards. Matej Ivanusha still leading. Already for the opening race today. It is pretty hot. Ooh, and there's a problem already. Car number 76. That is Leon Rakos. And there's also another black Twingo there. Probably involved in some sort of clash in the first corner. But that's back to the lead of the race. Matej Ivanusha defending it from the inside from Luka Glazer and Mihailo Milenkovic. But now Matej Ivanusha is running wide. And we'll see if he stays there. Two Twingos off the track there. That's uh, David Stushek and probably even Mihailo Milenkovic. Or potentially Luka Grem actually. And it looks like David Stushek has now more of a problem. Probably from that clash the car might be slightly damaged or maybe even more damaged. But Ivanusha still holding on to the first place. Luka Glazer trying to trouble him from second. And then there is, a, there is a nice fight for third behind them. Urban Yelovchan in fifth. Watching the showdown right in front of himself. But I was going to say that already now, for the first race of the day, it is pretty hot in Slovakia already. 26 degrees Celsius, unbelievably hot. I can tell you that because uh, we are really sitting right alongside the track with our commentary position and uh, you can imagine that uh, if anybody's already uh, in the grandstands they can be sweating quite a lot so let's see where the temperatures go for the rest of the day we've already had a couple of qualifying so this is not the first point of the program per se but it is the first racing action today Mihailo Milenkovic defending his third position and now he's overtaken Luka Glazer and there's also car number 95 Saboj Lantos having started 14th I believe he's already in the mix pretty much for the lead of the race yeah this is a fight for second place and uh, Matej Ivanusha has already pulled a bit of a gap there in the lead but anyway they can definitely close down on him pretty fast as they bump draft each other down the start and finish straight into the first they go this is the car number 65 driven Ooh, and there's a bit of a problem and uh, over its roof goes this car that's one of the yellow Twingos I believe that could have been Dejan Robida Urban Yelovchan also defending hard that was a big crash there and uh, pretty much every single weekend we see at least one of the Twingos roll over so this weekend is going to be no exception in the end just hope that the driver is okay of course but uh, the, the the car bodies are stiffened by or uh, with a roll cage yeah it's the car number 111 Dejan Robida he seems to have lost it all on his own as he ran wide there and uh, and lost the grip and uh, skidded across the track to the inside 
and uh, as he was traveling sideways through gravel, the car simply beached and rolled over. And Matej Ivanusha seems to have already lost the lead to Saboj Lantos. Saboj Lantos, he was unlucky in the end yesterday, he got involved uh, in the first corner crash halfway through the race and uh, dropped away from the fight for victory this time having started really low down in the field he's already worked his way up to the lead of the race and he's back in the mix for the race victory Urbanyalovchan being pushed off the track there by seems to be Rok Cerar Sabot Lantos in the lead, over the hill they go. And now they are appearing back in the view. Everybody in the paddock. The Ivanusha really pushing. Sabot Lantos for the lead of the race. And around the last corner we go. On to the next one. This is definitely going to be an interesting start and finish straight drive through across the line they go and Matej Ivanusha already pulling alongside Saboj Lantos and into the lead he goes but Mihailo Milenkovic now looks pretty racy there and also around the outside that's Luka Glazer trying to make his way through and he's now helped by Rok Cerar who's pushing him forward so Saboj Lantos lost the lead now. This is Urban Yelovchan. He was off the track there on that uh, previous lap. And Matej Ivanusha still in the lead. Now back from Luka Glazer. Rok Cerar is third. Green flags being waved as we have now blasted past the spot where um, Dejan Robida rolled his car on the previous lap. Matej Ivanusha pulls on the inside but he remains alone there and that's a problem for him because everybody else is going to just push each other through that means that Matej Ivanusha is now losing places Luka Glazer up into the lead from Rok Cerar and in third we have Mihailo Milenkovic right now Matej Ivanusha goes wide at the exit of the third corner and loses a little more ground Saboj Lantos is through now Glazer and the Rock Cerar locked in together in another push fest. There is more of that right behind them. As Sabolj Lantos goes through into the third place. Mati Ivanusha is fourth from uh, Mihailo Milenkovic. Over the crest they go. Luka Glazer in the lead. Yesterday's race winner. Now in P1 again. But look at this. Matej Ivanusha choosing the inside line together with Saboj Lantos. <laughs> this is also so typical for Twingo racing. You can have two groups following each other and uh, the order can swap within seconds. Just as it did right now. So now into the lead goes Lantos. From Ivanusha, Glazer falls down to third, Rok Cerar to fourth. Let's see that again, that was beautiful stuff. It looked like Mati Ivanusha was trying to pull alongside Saboj Lantos, but then he quickly realized that this is the way through, simply to follow Lantos. And uh, they both gained two places in one go. And another bump drafting action down the inside. That is Mihailo Milenkovic, who is now moving up the order. But he 
now remains behind Luca Glaser. I'd actually like to see where we have the championship leader Nick Stefancic. According to my life timing screen, he should be somewhere around 12th place. In the meantime, Mati Ivanusha is fighting with Sabol Lantosh. down into the heartbreaking zone for turn three. Mati Ivanusha trying to have a look around the outside, but that's the way longer way to go. slowly moved into the second half of the race look who we have there now trying to make his way through around the outside and now into third just as my lifetiming screen friendly stopped working but anyway in the lead from Ivanusha and Ivanusha is trying to have a go down the inside and through he goes that was a good move from Ivanusha and he is retaking the lead in this race And in third now, we have Mihailo Mladenovic. You'll notice that his front bumper is not originally from his car. That means that he must have lost it in yesterday's race. Or maybe even earlier on in the weekend, Mihailo Mladenovic came to Slovakia on the back of a double victory from Croatia, from Grobnik, where he won both races. And that's not really something that you see, you'll see a lot in uh, the Renault Twingo Cup because the order changes so much that it is actually highly unlikely that uh, you'll be lucky enough to with, win both races of the weekend. But he did that, just that, um, a month ago in Croatia near Rijeka. Now, he did not have the best run through the opening corner and he fell down the order from third to I believe even sixth or seventh and not only that he also lost some ground and lost momentum and lost touch with the group that he was part of at the start of this lap Sabol Slantos has now retaken the lead Ooh, look at Glaser in trouble there must have been contact and this seems to be it for Luca Glaser oh and that's really really bad luck for him because Luca Glaser he is in the championship fight that he did need to score well now in this race and this is it for this race and he will be really frustrated because he has now dropped it he was there in contact with Rock Terrar not really sure exactly what happened there we only saw the end of that clash and Luca Glaser yesterday's race winner is out of this race now and you'll see that he's definitely very angry about that because this was a very very important race for him he needed to score well he came here into the second race with a seven point deficit to the championship leader Nick Stefancic and uh, so far the race had been playing to his hands because Nick Stefancic has not been doing that well he started all the way down in 18th and uh, has been trying to move his way up the order but has not been that successful so still Luca Glaser was going to score really, really well in this race. And he was still staying in the mix for the lead. But now he is definitely, definitively out of this race. 
Matej Ivanush are still fighting it out with Savoj Lantosh for the first place. But Luka Glazer is now not going to outscore Nick Stefancic in the championship fight. Still, crossing out of the worst results is going to play some part in that. And uh, Luka Glazer should not lose any more points from his tally because he's already got two pointless results to his name from the opening round in Hungary. Sorry, that's... Uh, yeah, Luka Glazer. He didn't score any points in Hungary and now he's not going to score any points in this race. As opposed to Nick Stefancic who had his first zero only yesterday. Up until that point he had scored in every single race prior to that. So still there is jump, there is a chance for Luka Glazer, depending on how many points Nick Stefancic is going to lose. Right now he would be losing 10 points from Grobnik and that would drop him down to second behind Luka Glazer. So still there is a mathematical chance for Luka Glazer. But what is worse for him is that right now he has nothing to do about it himself anymore. Less than six minutes left on the clock and Matej Ivanusha still in the mix for the victory. He didn't really make it yesterday, but he might still make it today. Matej Ivanusha should be third in the championship right now. So this is very, very important for him. And the car of Luka Glazer has already been pulled away. So green flags can be waved in the third corner again. Schemer and uh, Tom Grunefeld there, further down the order. Ooh, and there's a problem for Okcerar. He may have had a slight contact there at the end of the second sector. He's already been in trouble today. He was in that clash with Luca Glaser earlier on that ended. Glazer's race and Rokcerar is now having to fight hard for positions because he was well, through that clash he, he dropped way down the order and he is now pushing David Stushek further forward there is also Alej Bujga in the mix there Back to the fight for the lead. Down the inside went Sabol Lantosh on Matej Ivanusha. This is Andrea Benini followed by David Stushek and Rok Cerar. And Mihailo Mladenovic now being pushed by Luka Grma. So Lantos back in the lead in front of Matej Ivanusha. Still two and a half minutes left to go. So we will be able to start another lap after this one. A little bit of a wide moment there for well, pretty much everybody else there. Just um, Mihailo Milenkovic. Um, 
and uh, this is Tom Grunfeld defending from Boyan Scheme. Mihailo Mladenovic fighting for P4. Holding off the pressure from Luka Germ. That is all for top five results. Let's go back to the fight for the lead. Sabolch Lantosh still leading this race from Matej Ivanusha. They have been swapping places in the last laps and uh, they have also pulled away from uh, the rest of the pack and the rest of the field. Ooh, and uh, this, uh, this is Aleš Bushga who has been gradually losing a bit of his bodywork which is now hanging off from underneath the car. It is not an uncommon sight in the Renault Twingo Cup that uh, the cars are wounded and bruised here and there. And onto the last lap we go. Still Sabolch Lantos leading this race from Matej Ivanusha. Now it really seems that uh, the race win is going to be decided only between these two. Last lap of the race, Sabolc Lantos in the lead from Matej Ivanusha. And he stayed there through the first corner. But still lots of places on this track where you can actually overtake. And uh, Mihailo Milenkovic seems to be falling back into, into the clutches of uh, Luka Grm. And also uh, Mihailo Mladenovic. So the time is up, let's just finish this lap and we will be in the finish. Another wide moment there for Milenkovic. There we go again, Mati Ivanusha. Giving a little nudge to Sabolch Lantosh, who is still holding on to the first place. He's, he's doing a great job. But a big part of it is still ahead of him. We are now pretty much halfway through the circuit, in the middle of the second sector. This is the, this is the tight and twisty one. And Mate Ivanusha is still incredibly close. Bumper on bumper. Matej Ivanusha is trying everything he possibly can, every trick in the book. Hard on the brakes again over the crest. Through this windy bit. And uh, another small hill ahead of them. As they run over it, the last corner of the track will appear in the distance for the race leader. This is still looking good, but this is really where you can overtake. So Mati Ivanusha still has everything to play for. This is still not over. Mati Ivanusha is directly behind Sabolch Lantosh. Will he try anything on the corner entry? No, he is leaving it for the last possible moment. He will be trying to get a better exit out of the last corner, but this is now starting to look good for Sabolj Lantos. He was on pole yesterday, but he was robbed of the victory. But this time, it is his and Sabolj Lantos is victorious in Slovakia. He held off that pressure beautifully on that last lap and the lap, those laps before. He has swapped places regularly with Mati Ivanusha, but in the end, it is Savoj Lantosh finally 
victorious in Renault Twingo Cup. And uh, this is redemption time for him after yesterday's race, where he was in the mix for the lead, but then threw it away with the first corner crash. In the end, he is victorious in race number two from Mate Ivanusha. Then there was that mix among Mihailo Milenkovic. This is another fight, cars number 76 and 81. Those are Leon Rakosh and Nate Verhovets across the line. Uh, we had the fight for the rest of the top five positions. There was Mihailo Milenkovic. There was um, Mihailo Mladenovic. Also, Luka Grma. Sadly, the live timing stopped working, so I cannot really tell you the real order now. Let's see some of the best moments again. This is the unlucky moment for Dejan Robida as he rolled his car over. This was one of the key moments, actually, when Mati Ivanusha followed Saboj Lantosh through in front of Luka Glazer and uh, Rok Cerar. They then clashed here in the third corner. Now they appear in the picture, and uh, this was race over for yesterday's winner, Luka Glazer. Mati Ivanusha tried everything he could and he was in the lead a couple of times. This was another problem for Okcerar and then Sabolj Lantos finally victorious in today's race of Renault Twingo Cup. Another beautiful and interesting race there for the Renault Twingo Cup. Uh, in the end, the race victory was uh, decided between Mate Ivanusha and uh, Sabolj Lantos. In the end, it is the Hungarian driver more successful here in Slovakia. Actually, very close to the Hungarian border, so this can also count sort of like a home race for Sabolj Lantos. And uh, he will definitely be happy about this victory. In the end, it wasn't a giant multi car fight for the race win, but anyway, it was very interesting and. Uh, Kind of even miraculously, Saboj Lantos held on to the first place on that last lap because I really thought that Mati Ivanusha would succeed somewhere. You've seen for yourself that it is not that hard to overtake with Renault Twingos, but in the end, Saboj Lantos beautifully held his nerves and didn't make a single mistake on that last lap and simply didn't allow anything for Mati Ivanusha. He remained in the lead and scored the victory. So, that is it for race number two of uh, Renault Twingo Cup. And with that, we're going to say goodbye to this series for this season's Asset Cup, because uh, in two weeks' time in Brno, Renault Twingo Cup will no longer be participating. But I'm sure that uh, we will join the Renault Twingo action uh, again before too long so thank you very much for watching and uh, in just a few moments we'll be back with more of the program
Hello and welcome back to Slovakia, to the Slovakia ring for race number two of today's racing program and also race number two of the Renault Clio Cup Bohemia. The cars already lined up on the starting grid and uh, it is seven places. That's the number of positions that have been swapped and rotated from yesterday's race. And uh, that means that yesterday's race winner and also the championship leader, Philip Sundström, is only going to start down the order in seventh. And also yesterday's seventh placed Zoran Poglayan is now promoted to pole position. Predrag Šajnovic. Beautiful fight in yesterday's race as well, and he scored sixth position. That means for him that he is going to start from the front row as well. And, uh, there is Philip Sandström, the championship leader, now with his team boss and also former champion of this cup racing series, and still an active, also Renault Clio Cup racer, and also now an East European TCR racer. Tomasz Pekas was there with him on the starting grid, making sure that. Uh, the seat belts are properly fastened and everything is ready for his protege for the start of this race because this is already for the title he can wrap it up already here Philip Sandström if all goes well already he's got a good good uh, lead in the championship uh, after yesterday's victory that was actually a vic uh, victory number six out of nine races so far so a pretty dominant display this season for Philip Sandström uh, that means that he is now at 203 points coming into this race which is 58 points more than the second placed Eric Bertelsson, Sandström's teammate. We have got three Carpex service team uh, cars in first three positions because Yusuf Antila is there in third with 91 points to his name. It is now only between Philip Sandström and Eric Bertelsson um, it is a little more complicated actually than just outright points because we will be crossing out two worst results of the championship for each driver and that is, that, that is going to potentially still mix things up. Both Philip Sandström and Eric Bertelsson have scored points in all of the races so far. Currently uh, it would mean if we crossed out the two worst results for both of them that Eric Bertelsson would lose 11 points in total. Philip Sandström uh, would actually lose more as he has been more consistent. He would lose 24 uh, as his two worst results of the season. Both of them came in, in Poland, Poland in Poznań where in the first race leading dominantly again Philip Sandström was in the first position but then he collected a puncture and uh, dropped down the order to P7. Uh, pretty much coming to Brno for the season finale in two weeks time, Philip Sandström needs to have a gap of over 54 points because 54 that is the amount of points that you can score over the weekend if you win absolutely everything you possibly can. There it is, Philip Sandström, 203, Eric Bertelsson, 145, so 58 points between them. Philip Sandström is therefore already there, but of course things can happen in this race, so still there is at least a mathematical chance for Eric Bertelsson in this race. And uh, we will have them both close to each other on the starting grid, as you've already seen, because they scored a 1-2, Actually, the Carpec Racing Service team scored a 1-2-3 yesterday, so had all, well, three, three of, his, uh, of its cars on podium. There is also this one, that is Richard Meixner, who provided great fun in yesterday's race. And uh, we met in the paddock yesterday, and uh, although he made some mistakes and uh, went through the gravel and uh, probably didn't score the best position he possibly could, he was just smiling. <laughs> Uh, and uh, glowing after yesterday's race because he just said, you know, I've had such a blast, I have, I've had so much fun. And uh, that's exactly what he needed because he missed the round uh, a month ago in Croatia, having had a crash in a different race with his Clio, not in this championship, but uh, that Clio got broken. And not only that, but also he himself 
ended up in the intense care unit for a couple of days um, with a broken lung. So we are really happy to see him back and, uh, and smiling. And uh, after that break, having had to stay calm for a couple of weeks, he was obviously hungry for more action. And uh, yesterday he had a really great fight with, for example, Predrag Šajnovic. Unluckily for Richard, uh, not all top 10 positions get swapped. For this race, only top seven. That uh, means that it leaves him down in 10th place on the grid. So let's actually see the starting order. Zoran Poglayan on pole position. Alongside him on the front row, Predrag Šajnovic. In P3, we have Sandy Eram. Alongside him, Levente Loshonci. Yusa Pantila in fifth. Uh, and alongside him, Eric Bertelson, one of the championship contenders and the championship standings leader, Philip Sandström, right behind them in seventh, alongside him, a Czech returnee, Lukáš Kuksa, in ninth, Walter Nežič, in tenth, uh, already mentioned, Richard Meixner. Then we have got the couple of uh, Mini Coopers also joining the grid here, eleventh placed, Ton Knappen, and in twelfth, Damian Stachowiak. We'll be racing here at Slovakia Ring, 5.9 kilometer racetrack, 14 turns, fast and flowing track. So, a great venue to host a race with uh, many overtaking possibilities. And also with Renault Clio's, lots of them frequently used. Behind Stachowiak in 13th, Balint Hatvan. He was really unlucky yesterday. He was in fight for uh, a potential victory even, but then had to stop and retire from the race alongside him in 14th Silvano Bolzoni in 15th Miha Primožić and he was supposed to be uh, joined on the eighth row of the grid by Yasmin Kolot but she had a crash in yesterday's race after a clash with one of the opponents and uh, hit the barrier rather hard and uh, the car was actually badly bruised the rear axle uh, not really okay after that hit and uh, not only that but also Yasmin Kolots she is not going to take part in the race today uh, as she got a pretty hard hit uh, on her ribs and doesn't feel well today and that means that uh, she's going to stay away from the racing action for the day so we wish her speedy recovery, uh, the least possible amount of pain and quick return to racing cars. Carpec racing cars of Yusuf Pantila, Eric Bertelson and Philip Sandström in 5th, 6th and 7th. We're still expecting that these three cars are going to be among the fastest. So we're expecting them to be moving up the order through the race, which should provide uh, some great overtaking. Let's look forward to that. And uh, potential possibilities, of course, for the front row starters, Zoran Poglayan and Predrag Šajnovic. Šajnovic showed a great performance yesterday. So he definitely has all it takes to win the race. Let's see if he can sort it out with Zoran Poglayan and then withstand the pressure from everybody else from the back. Also a, p a potential possibility for Sandy Aram and definitely Levente Loshonzi. So far this season, has been a clear sweep for the Carpec racing team. Their drivers scoring all of the victories so far. Six has gone, have gone to Philip Sandström, two to Eric Bertelson, and one victory to Yusuf Pantila. That of course means that, for example, Levente Loshonzi, who has been in the mix for a victory a couple of times already, uh, is still waiting for that victorious glory. So uh, right now, starting fourth, he will be definitely trying to finally break his bad bad luck. He has 
now had to correct his starting position and uh, reverse a little on the grid. Now everybody's ready to start the race. The red lights are on. And away we go. Slow start for Zoran Poglayan. Intern Sandieram had a better getaway. But the second phase of the start is not that quick for him. And the Carpic racing cars already pretty quick and trying to cut through the pack. We see Philip Sandström right in the mix there. And Levente Loschensi, he had a good start. Zoran Poglayan in the end holds on to the first place. And around the outside go the Carpic service cars. Eric Bertilsson is ahead of Philip Sandström. But Predrag Šajnovic falling down the order from second on the grid. Levent Eloshonci now fighting for the uh, race lead with Zoran Poglayen. Down the inside goes Levent Eloshonci and into the lead of the race. Erik Bertelsson up into third from Filip Sandström. Then there is a fight for sixth between Sandy Eram and Predrag Šajnovic. Behind them Yusuf Antila and uh, also quickly starting uh, Balint Hatvany. Levente Loshonci in the lead in the third corner. Eric Bertelson already trying to have a look down the inside on Zoran Poglayen. And into the second sector they go. Levente Loshonci trying to use the situation behind himself to pull a bit of a gap. Eric Bertelson is now through, and Zoran Poglayen is having to defend from Philip Sandström. He's choosing the wide line and wide entry into the, into the sixth corner. Yusuf Antila not that successful in his cut through the pack. He is there in the mix with his teammate. Richard Meixner, there is contact. That's Predrag Šajnovic in trouble in the fight with Balin Hatvány. Behind them Yusuf Antila. Levente Loshonci leading from Eric Bertilsson. This is an important race for Bertilsson and he has been doing great on the opening lap of the race. Ooh, and there's a big problem for somebody. That's Richard Meixner. He's dropped it at the end of the second sector. He's had a contact potentially with somebody exiting the second sector and on that run up the hill. And uh, he spun his car around and he's now going to lose touch with the rest of the pack. That is a great deal of shame after such a great blast in yesterday's race. Eric Bertelson is now through. He has overtaken Levent Teloshonci just as we were watching the trouble of Richard Meixner. And it is now Eric Bertelson in the lead. Also, Philip Sandström is through on Zoran Poglayan up into third. Levent Teloshonci is still trying to fight back around the outside into the first corner but not being successful. Balin Hatvan is through on Predrag Šajnovic in the battle for fifth. Behind them Yusuf Antila. So Eric Bertelson leading. Let's see again what happened there. That's already the end of the incident. And let's just hope that... Uh, Richard Meixner did get a big hit there against the, against the barrier. That would have been a bad luck for him. So Eric, Eric Bertelson is now leading the race but not pulling ahead. He has locked up a little entering the sixth corner. That one is notoriously hard to break correctly into. Another small lock up from Eric Bertelson. He's trying to break in corner so flat. He's going to have to keep in mind that uh, the tyres are also key to success, even in Renault Clio Cup race. And uh, if you if you will if you take too much from the tyres too soon, then you will run into trouble later on towards the end of the race. So still, tyre management is important, even though we only race for 25 minutes. If you just go flat out and don't think about the ties, you can chew through them in even seven, eight laps. Ooh, there's more trouble in the back. One of the Clio's exiting the track completely. That may have been Sandy Eram in trouble. Zoran Poglayen 
here defending from Predrag Šajnovic. He has now dealt with Balin Hatvan. Oh, that's a big fight in the last corner. Down the inside goes Šajnovic on Zoran Poglajen. And through he goes. It is a never-ending right hand of the last corner of the track. Now Balin Hatvan is going to have a go. Alongside each other they go down the pit straight. And there's also Yusuf Antila. Hungry for more points and more positions. He's now pulling alongside Zoran Poglajen and uh, going into the first corner. He is already ahead. Eric Bertilsson still not pulling ahead. He is in the lead and you saw the car jumping up and down through the first corner. Eric Bertilsson still remaining in the lead of the race and this is Sandy Eram who had an off-track excursion on that previous lap and also dropped down the order he's now in the mix with the minis and he's lost ground with the, re with the, with the, with the rest of the pack now Balin Hatvan following Predrag Šajnovic Beautiful race, lots of fights happening all around the tracks. Uh, all around the track, of course, the field is now spread into uh, smaller groups, but among them, there are beautiful fights. Eric Bertelson leading the race, really trying to pull ahead. behind him and Philip Sundström is trying to follow suit and find his way through he does not need to be too aggressive he still sees Ooh, and there's more trouble further further back that was Zoran Poglayan and uh, was it Mihap Primozic or Lukáš Buksa that may have been Lukáš Buksa actually Another lock-up for Eric Bertelson. He's really making the life really hard for his tyres, but he's, he's cornering so flat, you'll see that the inside rear wheel always kicked up in, in the air as the car is leaning uh, towards that front outside corner. And that means that the inside rear wheel is lifted up in the air. And as the car is braking, and then there's no... Um, reaction from the track because the, the the wheel is in the air then uh, by braking that wheel gets stopped and as it then hits the ground hits back the ground it's basically dragged against it and that's why you see puffs of smoke from that inside rear wheel when cornering this flat and braking this flat this hard Still the leading trio keeping intact or staying intact, that, that group. And in the meantime, we can take a look at the championship standings, the final championship standings of Renault Twingo Cup that we watched right before this race. Because sadly, the live timing was not really working towards the end of the race, so we could not really comment on the final order and what actually happened there. And the situation is great for Nick Stefancic, who actually scored 15 points today in the end. And uh, he is then victorious and scores the, the championship title from Luca Glaser. Luca Glaser, he was unlucky in that race as he ended it uh, with a clash or through the clash with Rock Terrar. That means that Luca Glaser remains second in the standings and Mati Ivanusha third. Let's get back to the Renault Clio Cup race. this scrap between Balin Hatvanya and Predrag Šajnovic. It 
seemed already that Shainovic is out of that fight, but in the last moment he did have another look down the inside into the last corner, but then backed out of that again. Martin Hatvain trying to break that slipstream, but losing momentum through that. And Philip Sandström diving down the inside on Levendelo Shonce and taking second off his hands. Balin Hatvain here still ahead of Predrag Šajnovic. Jusop Antila was having a look, but stays behind them. breaking it from the inside, defending hard against Pedrak Šajnovic. Šajnovic still looking pretty racy there. This is a fight for P4. Of course, these drivers would like to close the gap on this group, which is now fighting for the race victory. And Eric Bertelsson, well, he did have a chance to pull ahead, but he didn't manage that. And uh, Leventel Oshonsi, although he had to defend against Philip Sandström. He did manage to stay with Eric Bertelsson and now as Philip Sandström is through on Leventel Oshonsi and up into second he is directly on the on the uh, rear wing of his teammate Eric Bertelsson. So the two championship contenders now fighting it out for the race victory. Sandström wins this race, then we'll pretty much wrap it up. But let's not skip forward, because we are still in the first half of the race, only now nearing the halfway mark of it. There is one of the Cleos in the gravel there, on the outside of the last corner. Bertelsson down the pit straight he goes and he has his teammate right in his rearview mirrors Philip Sandström diving down the inside and into the lead of the race he goes Philip Sandström beautiful stuff from him and he has now overtaken his teammate Eric Bertelsson this is for the race victory Eric Bertelsson will of course try to fight back through the second right hander they go and uh, Ahead of us now lie the hard-breaking zone into the third corner. This is Bolzoni. But that's not that important. Let's see the fight back. That is actually not happening in the end. Eric Bertelsson staying behind his teammate, Philip Sandström. So Sandström still in the lead of the race. And now Leventel Oshonsi losing touch. see that again that fight for the first position textbook stuff from Philip Sandström used all the slipstream he had all along the pit straight and pull alongside Eric Bertelsson down the inside Eric Bertelsson tried to defend his position let's say in the first half of that pit straight but then didn't really stick to the inside line to the defensive line actually chose to keep good momentum through the first corner and have a potential fight back and this is Richard Meixner having his or fight back of his own and he is now overtaking Sandy Aram beautiful stuff from the fourth car pick service car he was in trouble earlier on spinning at the end of the second sector so 
now we see that he did not hit the barrier. Or if so, then really very lightly because the guard does not seem to be damaged. And Richard Meixner is managing to keep going. And not only that, he's going fast. And now overtaking Sandy Aram. So that seems that the car, oh, that means that the car seems to be working well. Eric Bertelson still staying with his teammate Philipp Sandström. He flashed his headlights down the pit straight to really use every single thing he can now to fight back and uh, fight for the victory. Still not working, but anyway, the most important thing is what we can actually see here physically on the track. Philip Sandström staying ahead of Eric Bertelsson. Levente Loschens, he has lost momentum and lost touch. And he's starting to drop. These two are definitely going to use their tyres a lot harder. Pretty interested to see what happens towards the end of the race with the respective pace of these two. But Philip Sandström, he has been absolutely dominant all through the season. This is now his chance to score a seventh victory out of ten races. That is absolutely unbelievable. He's naturally also been doing great at tyre management. Pretty much the only moment where he didn't really manage his tyre was in Poland, in uh, in Poznań, in race number one, where one of his tyres went flat. And he had to bid for a new one and finished seventh on the road. Philip Sandström leading the race. The drivers have already completed seven laps now. And Philip Sandström is also holding the fastest lap of the race, 226.506. And in his best lap, he is about uh, three or four tenths faster than Eric Bertelson and Lamenta Loschonzi. We are now in second and third. Valente Loschensi already five seconds behind the race leader. In fourth, we have got Balint Hatvan. So he did start towards the back. So that's a great recovery for Balint Hatvan in this race. And he's only three seconds behind his teammate, Levente Loschensi. So still, there are chances for him to score a podium here. Baden Katwani was 13th on the grid and now he is up to 4th. He is also carrying another opponent on his rear wing. Well, Eric Bertelson, he tried to stay together with his teammate, Philipp Sandström, but he's not really managing that anymore, and he's dropping back. This is the fight between Balint and Hatvani.
that actually must be Meha Primozic, the car number 21. Truth be told, I'm a little confused now because the live timing screen shows Meha Primozic all the way down in 14th. Uh, two laps behind everybody else. And it is Meha Primozic. Yeah, he's up to fifth. So the live timing is not exactly correct. And it is actually Meha Primozic up into fifth. And he has now set the fastest lap of the race. Down the inside goes Meha Primožić on Barin Hatvan. That was a beautiful move. A little lock up there. And now he tried to... Let's say make sure that Barin Hatvan cannot come back with another fight back. He was trying not to leave him any space on the track. But he did not succeed. And uh, Barin Hatvan goes back through. Up into fourth. Gradually, they seem to be reeling in Leventelo Shunze, but if they keep fighting like this, they will definitely not be faster than the other Hungarian driver, Leventelo Shunze. This is a beautiful fight between Hat Hatvan and Meha Primožić. Now the order changes pretty much in every single corner. Beautiful scrap there, and uh, they are now being reeled in by Predrag Šajnović, who's trying to get back himself in the mix. Beautiful dive down the inside from Primožić. He was late on the brakes. Both of them ran wide there and now Predrag Šajnović is directly with them. So this is now a three-way fight for fourth in this race. Beautiful stuff going on there. We have Primožić up into fourth. And now Barin Hatvan using the inside line. He's so fast down the back straight into the last corner. Down the inside he goes, but Miha Primožić fights back there. He's trying to be super late on the brakes. But Barin Hatvan closed that door on him. Now he is having a wider exit. And what is Predrag Šajnovic going to do about that? They are now back on the start and finish straight. So Barin Hatvan in fourth from Miha Primožić and Predrag Šajnovic. Šajnovic trying to use the slipstream of Primožić. These are the race leader already a couple of seconds apart, of each, uh, uh, apart from each other. Philip Sundström still leading and on his way to the seventh victory of the season. This must be the penultimate lap of the race. Sundström leading from Bertelson, but we are really interesting, uh, interested in seeing what happens in that fight for B4. Because that was a very close one. now cruising dominantly in this race as well and uh, on his way to yet another double victory of a weekend he scored a double in the season opener in Hungary and then also here in Slovakia in May and now he is on course to score another one or third one of his season here Let's get back to this action. Miha Primožić now defending from Predrag Šajnovic and Barin Hatvan seems to have pulled away from the two. And if my estimations are right, we will be able to start another lap. There will be time for that. Half a minute left on the clock right now as Philip Sandström is re-entering the start and finish straight there he goes and into the last one this is looking good for Philip Sandström he has been absolutely dominant and having started seventh he quickly moved up the order not that quickly as his teammate Eric Bertelson actually Bertelson's opening lap was absolutely impressive but uh, 
Philippe Sandström patiently waited for it and now he is in the lead of the race and Richard Meixner having some more fun in his Clio and he has overtaken another opponent there this is Eric Bertilsson in second they go across the line Richard Meixner he has now dealt with Silvano Bolzoni. Lukáš Uksa is there with them, dropping down the order. So Richard Meixner now up into ninth. And uh, Lukáš Uksa has now also overtaken Silvano Bolzoni. Behind them is also uh, Walter Nežič and Sandiera. while the pole sitter, Zoran Poglayan, down in eighth. And the second car from the front row of the grid, Predrag Šajnovic, currently in P6. There he is in that uh, predominantly white Clio, following Miha Primožić in the fight for P5. So for the top five result in this race. That would be a beautiful success for Primožić as he started towards the back of the grid. Primožić was actually last on the grid in 15th. He is now up in the top five. But this is the most successful one of them all. Filip Sandström now really on course for his seventh victory of the season out of 10 races, absolutely dominant. Filip Sandström is going to extend his championship lead even more and with that, he should wrap up the title battle. Filip Sandström victorious for the second time here in Slovakia this weekend. Seventh victory overall. It's his first, uh, sorry, third double of the season. Absolutely outstanding statistics for the Swede. And Filip Sandström victorious again. And with that, all the work seems to be done. Walter Nežić threw on uh, Bolzoni. On that last lap, Eric Bertelson, absolutely impressive opening laps. And he quickly made his way through into the lead of the race. But then he found no answer to the fight and uh, attack from his teammate, Philip Sandström. So he is ending the race in second. And symbolically, the two Carpex service cars now running alongside each other on that victory lap. This is another double victory for the Czech team. Yesterday it was a 1-2-3 on the podium. Now they will be joined on the podium by uh, Hungarian Levente Loshonci. So now let's see the highlights of the race. And those quick surges through the field from Filip Sandström and Erik Bertelsson. Jusso Pantila tried to follow suit, but then in the end was not that, that successful and ends up seventh on the road. In front of him also uh, Balin Hadwein finishes fourth, having started towards the back of the pack. Miha Primožić in fifth, Predrag Šajnovic in sixth. Behind them the uh, already mentioned Jusop Antila in eighth, the pole sitter Zoran Poglayen behind them after a beautiful fight back, really beautiful fight back. Richard Meixner behind him, the top of the top ten is Lukáš Uksa. Walter Nežić 11th from Silvano Bolzoni, Torn Knappen and Sandy Aram. Damian Stachowiak did not finish and Jasmin Kolotz did not even enter the race after yesterday's uh, hit against the barrier. Beautiful fighting, beautiful race in the Renault Clio Cup Bohemia. Wonderful attacks, wonderful scraps all through the field. And this was the move of the race. As I mentioned, textbook stuff. Absolutely surgical down the inside on the brakes. And this was Richard Meixner and his move on Sandiera. This was a beautiful fight for B4 between Hatvani 
and Primožić. Primožić tried to pile some pressure on uh, the Hungarian driver, but in the end fell back into the clutches of Predrag Šajnovic. Nobody found any answer to another dominant display by Filip Sandström, seventh victory of the season, third double victory of the year, and uh, a title wrap-up. He will still lose some points through results crossing out, but with this seventh victory and uh, more points scored on top over his teammate Eric Bertelson, he should now have enough points to be sure that he will be crowned the champion of the 2021 season. So that's it for the Renault Clio Cup Bohemia. And uh, well, thank you for watching, but don't go very far because we will be back pretty soon for more racing.
Hello and welcome in Slovakia. Just a couple of tens of minutes drive away uh, outside from the Slovakian's capital, Slovakian capital of Bratislava. We are going to watch together the second race of the fifth weekend of this season of the Eastern European TCR. Cars lining up on the starting grid and it was a day full of action yesterday. Uh, we started very well and dramatically here at Slovakia Ring. This is the penultimate round of the championship. Of course, after this, in two weeks' time, we will be going to the Czech Republic, to Brno, to finish the season in two weeks' time. And there is still everything to play for because it's all hot in the championship fight. Yesterday's race was really interesting. Uh, the championship leader, Tomáš Pekas, could not start and uh, take part in it because technical trouble had struck and bad luck had struck, uh, struck before the race had even begun. So it was an opportunity handed on a silver plate to his uh, championship rival Michal Makesh, but he did not really make the best of it. Michal Makesh uh, won the qualifying and was starting on pole position yesterday, but he stalled on the grid and uh, dropped all the way to the back of the pack and uh, had to make all the work again and uh, fight through the field, which he did, eventually finished third on the road, but then he was penalized, he was given five second penalty for hitting this car from behind a couple of times. Petr Cizek, they had a beautiful fight there in yesterday's race, Petr Cizek in third, also uh, Michal Makic in fourth. And then and then uh, Karol Witke in fifth. Bartosz Groszek, he had a beautiful chance to win the race yesterday. He was very fast, having uh, got a new engine after Friday. The team had a, a night shift all the way until 3 a.m. in the morning when they were swapping the engine in his car as it had been uh, switching off through electronic faults. And uh, Bartosz Groszek then approached yesterday's race with a fresh engine. However, he had a clash with Sebastian Steibel on the opening lap of the race and uh, that damaged the steering a little and with that the fuel consumption got uh, a little higher, also the tyre wear got higher and that meant that uh, Bartosz Groszek decided against chasing after this man, Jonas Karklis, who made his debut in the series yesterday and what a debut that was because the Lithuanian driver uh, exploited all the dramas to his benefit and uh, used also the situation that there was nobody standing right in front of him on the starting grid. He was on the second row of the grid, but the championship leader, Tomasz Pekas, was missing from that spot. And uh, Jonas Karklis made a beautiful start, beautiful getaway, uh, took the lead early on in the race and then was never challenged also through the fact that uh, Bartosz Groszek uh, with that damaged steering decided to remain second and actually bring it home for good points which he did and uh, also helped his championship fight. Some more fiddling about in the VW Golf of Tomasz Rzepecki. Let's see if there's a problem or these are just some precautionary checks right before the race. Jan, uh, sorry, Giacomo Germandi, he didn't have the best of races yesterday. He had a very strong qualifying prior to that and he scored third on the grid, which immediately became second because there was no Tomasz Pekas on the grid. But now Giacomo Germandi is being 
pushed away from the starting grid, so there is a problem on his car, apparently. Giacomo Germandi didn't have a best race yesterday as he visited the gravel traps all around the track too often and then dropped back through the field and uh, in the end he actually beached his car in one of the gravels. And this is Michal Makesh. He didn't really make it happen yesterday, he didn't really take the victory that he could have taken, but um, still he scored valuable points and moved himself uh, up in the championship fight. So actually what happened to Tomasz Pekas? Oh, and this is probably where Giacomo Germandi was supposed to start from P12, but it seems that his car was leaking some fluids and now the track is going to need some attention from the track marshals. So that's an interesting twist right before the race. And uh, since we are talking about interesting twists uh, before the race, this is actually the championship standings right after yesterday's race. Michal Makesh now leading with 158 points, so nine points ahead of Tomasz Pekas. Karol Witke, he has been consistent through the season hasn't really scored a victory yet, but he is now third in the standings with 92 points from fourth place Bartosz Groszek and fifth place Sebastian Steibel. Steibel actually starting from pole today and he is tied for fourth with Bartosz Groszek. So that's gonna be really interesting. Anyway, uh, what happened to Tomasz Pekas to, to actually finish that story? Uh, his suspension arm, the suspension wishbone snapped in qualifying. Still, prior to that, he had, uh, he had set uh, a timed lap good enough for the front row early on in the qualifying, so hats off to that. But then the suspension wishbone snapped and uh, approaching the first corner. So Tomasz Pekas beached his car. That was it for his qualifying, but still he was on course to start second. Uh, so from the front row to yesterday's race. However, after that suspension damage, as the wheel was actually wiggling about, it damaged also the differential, but that was not apparent to the team immediately. And they had only discovered that problem about half an hour before the race itself and of course at that time it was obviously too late to repair the car and fix it for the race and that meant that Tomasz Pekas was not able to start. Bad luck for him but uh, and also today he is having to start from 13th so lots of work for him to do but still not unrealistic. He's trailing Michal Makesh by nine points in the championship standings. It will not be decided today so definitely the championship fight is going to go as they say down to the wire. We are racing in Slovakia for the second time this season. Uh, we already raced here uh, earlier on in May when uh, Slovakia Ring was replacing the cancelled round in Austria at the, the Red Bull Ring because of the COVID restrictions. Now we are back uh, for the Slovakian Grand Prix and it is the longest track on the calendar, 5.9 uh, kilometers. And this is the standings on the grid. Sebastian Steibel is on pole. Alongside him, Petr Cizek. Petr Cizek was on course to score his first podium of the season yesterday, but then he got overtaken by Michal Makesh. But actually, uh, regarding, or uh, let's say including the penalty for Michal Makesh, he would have finished third uh, still, Petr Cizek, but he had a terrible moment in the last corner where he was simply too late on the brakes, locked his wheel and uh, went into the gravel, so he finished. Uh, way down the order, but now thanks to reversing of the grid positions, he will be starting on the front row again. So another chance for him to finally make it through, make the breakthrough and score that desired podium. On the row uh, number two, that's Radim Adamek in third and Jarko Kniego in fourth. P5, that's Sanel Cehic. P6, the championship leader, Michal Makesh. Behind him, Karol Witke and Bartosz Groszek. And on row number five, yesterday's winner, Jonas Karklis, René Martinek in tenth and the mechanics of uh, Giacomo Germandi working hard to make this car ready and still send Giacomo Germandi into this race. We'll see if they succeed. There is still a little time before the drivers finish the formation lap. Tomasz Repetsky in 11th on the starting grid, Giacomo Germandi in 12th, Tomasz Pekas in 13th, Sandieram in 14th, sorry, that's just the uh, rest of the 
uh, rest of the information from Cleo Cup still somehow left on the live timing screen, but never, never mind that. Tomáš Pekas will start last from 13th, and we will uh, be watching his charge through the pack. Well, yesterday's race was pretty hectic already. The opening lap uh, introduced and uh, offered lots of drama. So before we get going today, let's just quickly see what happened in yesterday's race. So a victory on debut for Jonas Karklis, great stuff from him and hats off from us to him. He will be starting ninth because, uh, as is the way in the Eastern European TCR, for the race number two, the starting grid is determined by the end results of race number one. But between six and ten places are reversed and it depends on the draw of the victorious driver from race number one. He draws a number and that number is then reversed. So it was uh, the turn of Jonas Karklis yesterday and he picked up number nine. That means that uh, he dropped from first to ninth on the grid and uh, it promoted Sebastian Steibel from ninth to pole position for today's race. Sebastian Steibel, he was unlucky yesterday. He had a contact with Bartosz Groszek on the opening lap of the race approaching turn number three he was trying to shut the door on Bartosz Groszek, but Bartosz Groszek still had at least a, well, a small portion of his car alongside him. And uh, they made contact. Sebastian Steibel spun out of the track and he was actually very lucky in that situation because very nearly he was collected by... Oh, it was very near uh, because Michal Makesh also uh, had made a mistake there and very nearly collected him in the process. But somehow, Michal Makesh managed to turn in. I tried to uh, speak with Michal yesterday and, and uh, ask him about that situation, what actually happened and uh, what he did with his car to somehow avoid uh, Sebastian Steibel, his stationary car. And Michal Makesh, he was kind of, <laughs> well, really happy that he didn't make contact with Steibel. He said, you know, I don't even know what actually happened there. I was just lucky that I didn't hit him. So, Steibel, he can now make it happen uh, on the second attempt today. As he starts from pole position, Steibel has already proven this season that he has pace and can be among the best. Giacomo Germandi driving out of the pits. So hats off to his team. They are celebrating that they made it happen. Well, the car was in trouble yesterday already, it was in trouble today, but somehow it will get going. So we'll see if those problems are now definitively solved. And Giacomo Germande can actually make some ground in today's race. The rest of the pack is finishing their formation lap, Sebastian Steibel. On pole position alongside him, Petr Cizek. He has not been on the podium yet this season. And definitely it is about time to finally stand on there. Because Petr Cizek has already also proven his speed and showed potential. Yesterday it simply didn't work out for him. Petr Cizek currently 12th in the standings with 23 points. Sebastian Steibel fourth with 85 points, tied for points with Bartosz Groszek. As we saw 
Giacomo Germandi prepare for the pit lane start. The rest of the pack have finished their formation lap and the drivers are now lining in their grid spot, the grid spots. So get ready everybody. Yesterday's opening lap was really hectic and dramatic, so what happens today? Sebastian Steibel on pole alongside him, Petr Cizek. The revs are now rising. And away we go, and that's a terrible start from Petr Cizek. He stalled on the grid, just like Sanil Cehic. They are remaining there as Sebastian Steibel is leading the pack into the first corner. Radim Adame goes up into second and Karol Witke trying to make some more ground there attacking Radim Adamek into the first corner. Michal Makesh also in the mix. This is René Martinek completing the pack on the opening corner of the opening lap. Sebastian Steibel, I think he didn't get the best of getaways but he was massively helped by the fact that Petr Cizek stalled on the grid and that means that Sebastian Steibel is now leading the race with a bit of a gap already. Entering turn number three with the first hard heavy braking of the circuit. Radim Adamek now fighting together with yesterday's winner Jonas Karklis. And Jonas Karklis is already through. Michal Makish following suit and into third he goes. Karol Witke falling down to fifth and behind him is already the second placed man of the championship, Tomáš Pekas. This was a dramatic moment in yesterday's race as well. Radim Adamek lost it here but now he is Navigating his Audi nicely through this corner. Sebastian Steibel leading from Jonas Karklis and Michal Makic. Karklis made an absolutely beautiful start there from P9 on the grid, already up into P2. Karol Witke now fighting it out with Tomáš Pekas. And he will definitely be trying to overtake Radim Adamek. Jarko Knego also dropped down the order from fourth on the grid. And Tomáš Pekas already having a go on. Karol Witke, but Karol Witke closed that door on him. There is Petr Cizek from the front row. Ooh, there must have been contact and Bartosz Groszek was involved in it with Jarko Knego. So there was trouble in the second sector. Tomasz Pekas now down the inside. That will become the outside line for the last corner against Karol Witke. Down the back straight they go into the last corner of the track. Very late on the brakes is Tomasz Pekas, but a beautiful maneuver from his side and Tomasz Pekas is through, up into B5 he goes. Sebastian Steibel still leading from Jonas Karklis and Michal Makesh. Those are the top three positions in this race right now. Rani Adamek in fourth with Tomasz Pekas right on his tail, but also there is Karol Witke in sixth. Behind them, Jarko Knego and Bartosz Groszek. He was involved in some sort of contact, I believe, there on the opening lap. And behind them, after a terrible, terrible start, Petr Cizek. And that's a rotten bit of luck for him once more. He was already on the front row in the second race last month in Croatia at Grobnik. He had two attempts there as the first race was red flagged. And that was good luck for him, but then the splitter snapped in the race, so Petr Cizek could not hold to that good position. Yesterday he lost it through his own mistake, and uh, today there is more drama for him on the start of the race. So Petr Cizek dropping down to ninth, having stalled on the grid. Jonas Karklis damaging his tyre a little through this lockup, but that must have been the inside rear wheel that was up in the air. So this is a typical picture in the TCR racing. As the car is diving on the outside front corner, it is lifting up the inside rear corner and uh, that will then get stopped through the braking and as it's being dragged on the asphalt of the tarmac, it obviously locks up. He has already pulled 
at least some gap. He's 1.3 seconds ahead, or at least he was, on the start and finish straight on the previous lap, but he still remains a little ahead of everybody else. Jonas Karglis up into P2 with Michal Makish right behind him. Michal Makish is only carrying 10 kilos of uh, ballast for today's race or for this weekend, but having won the qualifying, he will be penalized heavily for the season finale in Brno. That will be a clear disadvantage to him, but now he is having to make the most of the current weekend and he has to be fast. He has to overtake Jonas Karklis because in his rearview mirrors he can already see his championship contender, Tomasz Pekas, getting ever so closer with every single lap, with every single corner. He's trying it left and right, but Jonas Karklis, he's a tough one. Although this is his first outing in the Eastern European TCR, he is no stranger to TCR racing. But now Michal Makesh makes the move, down the inside he goes into the third corner. Oh, and that was a late break for Tomasz Pekas, and he exits the track. Big mistake for Tomasz Pekas, and he lost some ground there. He's back on track, still fourth, but he definitely lost some time there. Straight ahead he went in the third corner. Michal Makesh up into second, so good job for him. Oh, and the race is red flagged. Race is red flagged for some reason. Well, oh, that was a big shunt for Jarko Kniego. And I believe that is after the second corner of the track. He's vis visibly shaken. And that must have been a nasty, nasty hit. Oh my goodness, that must have been a big one. I believe that is the exit of the second corner. It's a really, really fast one. But... Uh, it is not that easy, it, it is a flat, oh my goodness, that was a massive shot there for Jarko Kniego. And that is a clear red flag, that is a clear, clear red flag. We are so happy to have seen Jarko Kniego get out of his car on his own and walk away. That's always great to see. Ooh, that was a big one, that was a big one and this will take some time to clear. That must have been right after turn two. It's a, it's a really fast right-hander, which you can take flat out, not under all conditions. If the grip level isn't high enough, then it is a risky one. And we already saw yesterday a couple of drivers having pretty wide moments there. Namely, for example, Giacomo Germandi. And, uh, well, the key is then, if you actually find yourself running across the gravel, across the grass, to somehow keep it straight, because if you don't, and you spin your car, then you will hit the barrier really hard and usually at a very unfortunate angle. Ooh, that was a big one. It was such an impact that it had completely snapped the front left wheel. And that car is really, really heavily damaged. I would even say that that car is totaled. Well, the rest of the pack is now forming back on the starting grid and they will be, for, uh, of course, waiting for the instructions from the race control. The time is stopped at 19.20. So, we'll hide the graphics for now. Because, of course, when the race gets restarted, back at those 19 minutes and it's either 20 or 28 it's a little hard to see but anyway um, Jarko Knego walked away from that one that's that's great to see he will definitely need some medical attention just to check at least that everything is okay I believe that he will be in some pain and uh, the recovery vehicles are on their way to the spot of the crash. We didn't, of course, see the start of that incident, if there was a contact with somebody or if Jarko had lost it on his own. But nevertheless, it was a massive one and uh, he even very nearly rolled the car over. It was actually dancing around pretty heavily and uh, not even sure if he hit the barrier on the outside or on the inside, but I would assume 
knowing this corner that uh, he simply ran wide uh, on the exit of turn two and uh, as the car was ba bouncing across the grass and across the gravel he may have lost control there let's try and see he hit the barrier on the inside i assume from this picture and then flew back across the track to the inside oh, sorry to the outside lost it exiting the second corner and uh, then the car was sent spinning across the track onto the uh, into the inside wall oh and when that happens that's always that's always very nasty well Slovakia ring it is a very fast track and uh, although its history isn't that long it was built between 2008 and 2009 it has already witnessed some pretty serious crashes still have the images of a flying Ferrari for 430 or 458. Flying over the fence, uh, approaching the first corner. And, uh, there have been some really big ones. I think it was last year uh, in the World Touring Car Cup. There was a fight involving the Honda driver Nestor Girolami, who after a, after a fight lost it, exiting turn one and then crashing really, really heavily into the barrier on the inside. So, yes, yeah, Slovakia Ring, it is a beautiful flowing track. If you catch a good rhythm, it's absolutely enjoyable for the racing drivers, but it is a high speed track, and uh, if you lose it at speed, then Chances are that the hit is going to be pretty big, as this one definitely was. So, whew, really glad to see that Jarko Knigo walked away from that one. That's the most important news right now at the moment. And of course, more news will be expected from race control, because we would like to know and would like to see uh, how quickly we will get racing again. Of course, first we need to recover the vehicle and... Uh, if after that crash there are some fluids across the track, then they will need to be cleared as well. So, terrible starts by um, Petr Cizek and Sanel Cehic. It was a bad luck for both of them because both of them were placed really high up on the grid. Sanel Cehic fifth, uh, Petr Cizek uh, on the front row of the grid. But they dropped directly, immediately, all the way down the order then there was that touch between I think there was a touch between Knego and uh, Bartosz Groszek at least from the end of that situation it looked like there had been a contact but I'm not entirely sure about that one and then there was this battle um, Tomáš Pekas with a beautiful move around the outside Michal Makes then uh, under breaking overtook Jonas Karklis for second just as Tomasz Pekas went straight ahead having missed his braking point uh, approaching turn three and then the massive crash of Jarko Knigo there is the car being already taken away from the spot of the crash DCR racing is always dramatic, but this is the kind of drama that we can definitely do without. Yeah, very likely this one's already happened. So, the car is uh, on the flatbed, being taken back to the paddock. See how fast the, the clear clear away will be. How much time it will take to the track marshals to prepare the racing or the, to prepare the track for, for more racing. Of course, uh, there is debris all over the place. But as the as uh, the 
car got a big hit on the front. It's also very likely that there are some, some fluids, uh, maybe the coolant, maybe some oil. That will also need to be uh, taken care of. So 19.28, that is the time left from this race. Yeah, the main impact seems to have come on the front left corner of the car. That was probably how the car was sent into the wall. <laughs> front left corner first. But then as it was rotating and still hitting the barrier, all the other corners got damaged as well. Time to go, 30 minutes. Actually, more chances for everybody who didn't really make the best of the first start. And uh, when the race is red flagged, the order is actually taken from the previous finished, previous completed lap, which means Bad luck for Michael Makesh right now because it is now virtually undoing his uh, nice overtake on Jonas Karklis. Jonas Karklis will line up on the second place again. So he is going to be given that second place back. Sebastian Steibel should remain in first. Behind Karklis, the lifetime is now showing Michael Makesh and Tomasz Pekas. Adamek in P5, Karol Witke in P6. So Tomasz Pekas keeps both spots that he claimed from Witke and Adamek. He managed to do it soon enough before the crash, so he can keep the fourth place. Bartosz Groszek in seventh. Jarko Pnego is still there in the, on the live timing screen in eighth, but of course, for obvious reasons, Jarko Pnego will not be not be present for the restart of this race. Petr Cizek then down in ninth, which will then become eighth. So let's actually introduce it like that already. Petr Cizek in eighth, Sanel Cehic in ninth, and Giacomo Germande in tenth. Giacomo Germande, he will get a second chance as his car leaked oil on the grid, had to be pushed away managed to fix the problem seemingly and uh, fill the engine with some, some more oil and uh, send the car back out on track. Behind Giacomo Germandi, we also have René Martinek and Tomáš Řepecky to complete the field. Yeah, this is the approach to the scene of the crash. Track marshals inspecting the scene of the crash. We're trying to see and figure out if the barrier will need some more attendance and maybe even repairs because the repair of a barrier always takes quite long, especially if you have to replace a segment of it. It can be done, but it takes some time. But I do not see that exact spot 
where the car of Jacques will go hit. See, we will have 30 minutes left from this race, so we will get shortened uh, a little. But from these pictures, from these images, all seems to be okay already. Five minute signal is now being shown to the drivers, so in five minutes we will get back to racing. It should be a safety car restart. We'll get going again. The cars are in the hands of their teams. They will have to leave the grid in just a few moments. Still some more gravel away from the runoff areas from the curbs oh that was a big one so red flag race is going to be restarted in a couple of minutes thank you very much so Sebastian Steibel he actually I think he didn't get the best of getaways I even suspect that there was a little movement before the red lights went out I think the car moved a little and uh, through that he didn't get the best of starts or at least that was my impression but then he exploited the situation that unraveled right alongside him uh, in effect because Petr Cizek stalled on the grid and everybody else had to uh, swerve around him and avoid him so Sebastian Steibel in the end managed to keep his first position and actually by some margin Jonas Karklis made a blistering start and from P9 he promoted himself up into second that was a beautiful beautiful opening lap for the Lithuanian Michal Makesh uh, moved up into third Tomasz Pekas up into fourth from sixth and thirteenth place respectively for these two so the championship contenders are now uh, back together and they all will be close to one another for the restart of the race the march Pekas, as i already mentioned was really unlucky yesterday the suspension wishbone had snapped in qualifying but prior to that moment uh, he had actually shown impressive pace in qualifying because usually uh, what you do in qualifying is that you start with uh, all the tyres that are little worn uh, on the front to actually warm up the rears and when they are ready you go back to the pits and uh, uh, change the fronts for the fresh set to actually have the maximum grip on that front axle which is of course the most important one here for the front wheel driven cars and also uh, front wheel limited cars so already with his first flying lap Tomas Pekas managed a beautiful lap which was then good enough for second on the grid that must mean that he must have had some serious pace still in his pocket or uh, up, up his sleeve but he was unable to show it because the suspension wishbone snapped entering the first corner he ended up in the gravel and as already mentioned it also damaged the differential but the, the team uh, didn't spot it and immediately only half an hour before the start and that was of course too late uh, to fix the car so Tomasz Pekas missed yesterday's race so far this season has been up and down and actually really interesting Despite his penalty, 
of course he had his main rival not scoring, not even uh, taking part in the race in the end. Uh, Michal Makesh was trailing Pekas by a couple of points before yesterday's race. Now he is ahead by seven points. He scored 12 yesterday. So seven points uh, between them. 158 for Michal Makesh, 151 for Tomáš Pekas. These are the two championship contenders. Then there is actually a beautiful, beautiful fight for third overall, actually, which is currently being held by Karol Witke with 92 points to his name. And then uh, tied for points are Sebastian Steibel and Bartosz Groszek, both having scored 85 so far. Milovan Vesnic is down to six with 68 points, but of course after the crash at Grobnik, Milovan Vesnic is not taking part in uh, this weekend. So he will remain where he is, or at least he will not move uh, any further up. Tomasz Zapetsky, he entered the pit lane the red flag conditions so now as uh, all the pack has set for a new formation lap he is also released from the pit lane he will join the rest of the field the season opened in hungary with a double victory for tomas pekas he opened the season in dominant style on the back of a successful campaign in Renault Clio Bohemia last season that he dominated then we moved here to Slovakia as we cancelled the round in Austria, round in Austria. and uh, this was the first uh, victory for Michal Makesh in the Eastern European TCR as he won the opening race of the weekend. Then in the second one, it was Tomáš Pekas victorious again for the third time this season. Then came Poznań, Michal Makesh returned back to winning ways in race number one, having started from pole position scored his first pole of uh, the season in the second race. It was finally somebody else other than Michal Makesh and Tomas, Tomas Pekas victorious and it was uh, debuting local boy Bartosz Groszek who we are now watching and he scored his first victory immediately on his first weekend on his home track. Then we went to Grobnik, first race, that was a victory for Milovan Vesnic and in race number two, victory for Tomasz Pekas as his main rival, Michal Makesh, made a big mistake uh, leading to the first corner and collecting uh, Milovan Vesnic and Sebastian Steibel in the process. Michal Makesh was then also penalized, so only scored eight points in race number two at Grob. And then came Slovakia ring and the first victory for Jonas Karglis, who joined the field yesterday, or let's say this weekend. The race has already been restarted, basically, though we are behind the safety car, but this is already counting uh, towards the race distance, so you'll notice that the time is already running. And uh, at the end of this lap, the safety car will uh, re-enter the pit lane and we will go back to racing. So Sebastian Steibel, he had already pulled some sort of a gap before the race got red flagged so he is now going to have to do it all over again it is now up to him to choose the moment when he restarts the race he does it right now Sebastian Steibel leading the race at the restart in his Cupra Leon green flag is the wave let's see the first corner Sebastian Steibel in the lead from Jonas Karklis and Michal Makesh immediately having a go down the inside on Jonas Karklis. Michal Makesh wasting no time. Tomáš Pekas having to defend from Radim Adamek. Both going side by side through the first corner. And there are the two full in race Academy Coopers following Bartosz Groszek in his Horniak Aditis Audi. Michal Makesh up into second immediately. He was demoted from that second spot by the red flag, but now he has repeated that immediately and he is immediately on the back of Sebastian Steibel. He's definitely gonna, uh, not, uh, not gonna be hanging around here and uh, lose any more time. He definitely needs to win this one. Although he is now up in the championship lead, still maximum score, that's what he is aiming for because he knows full well that for the race uh, or for the season finale in Brno he will carry the maximum ballast having won the qualifying here in Slovakia. Tomáš Pekas will also be heavily penalized having uh, 
set a lap good enough for the front row though he was then unlucky because he couldn't take part in the race yesterday and actually use that front row start but now he is up to fourth he defended his position against Radim Adamek who has now fallen back a little this is Jonas Karklis defending from uh, Pekas already and Bartosz Groszek is up, up to fifth with a fresh new engine in his car after the free practice. Karol Witke. Then behind Bartosz Groszek in sixth. Radim Adamek he has dropped a few places Bartosz Groszek under pressure from Karol Witke. he is carrying big ballast this weekend 60 kilos for Karol Witke. so he's having to fight hard with his car and with his opponents but he's been doing great and actually yesterday uh, thanks to the penalty for Michal Makesh he actually scored a podium this is where he scored his first podium of the season earlier on in May. And yesterday he could not really enjoy the podium ceremony, but then uh, that third place, well, that's something that he's definitely going to accept. Jonas Karklis losing more ground after that beautiful start. And he has now lost places to Michal Makesh and Tomasz Pekas. Petr Čížek defending from uh, Giacomo Germandi. This is Karklis on the tail of Tomáš Pekas. We're expecting Tomáš to be pulling ahead actually, because he has now, he is the one who is now uh, going ahead, going forward. There is Bartosz Grošek. Under pressure from Karol Witke. Sanel Cehic, all the way down in 10th, having started from 5th, but actually having stalled from 5th on that original race start. Five and a half minutes left on the clock. It is, of course, by feeling a little weird race, as it was red flagged, so it was basically split into halves. And the Cizek, this is the place where he lost it all yesterday. He was on course to actually score that first podium of the season, even though he was, he was fourth on the road, but then came the penalty for Michal Makic, but sadly, for the Cizek, he outbroke himself, entering the last corner of the race. And went through the gravel, dropping down to eighth on the road. Bartosz Groszek still under pressure from uh, Karol Witke. And they are now going side by side from the first corner. Even with 60 kilos in his car. Ooh, and there's more bad luck for Petr Cizek as he finds himself facing the wrong way. Momentarily, he is now back on track. But more bad luck for him as he now dropped down the order further. So he was starting from front row to this race, but it is not going to be a good one again. Unfortunately for him. Bartosz Groszek still holding off that pressure from Karol Witke. He was trying to get some good tips yesterday. Uh, watching the onboards with his... Uh, made and let's say team boss Petr Fulin as to how to approach the racing action on track. Sebastian Steibel still leading the race by one second from Michal Makesh. He was slightly faster actually. Tomáš Pekas, he has set the fastest lap of the race, 2.13.39. He was nearly a full second faster than Michal Makesh the last time out or actually in the best laps. Last time out, 
Sebastian Steibel did 214.3, Michael Makic did 214.6, Tomáš Pekas 214.5, so Steibel seems to be pulling ahead from the rest of the pack. Three minutes, ten seconds left on the clock. So, pretty much two laps from home now. This is looking well for Sebastian Steibel. Oh, big mistake for Tomáš Pekas, that is unbelievable. Tomáš Pekas has lost it in the last corner and he's running through gravel, so he's losing so many places now. Tomáš Pekas, that's a very unfortunate moment for him. We do not know exactly what happened there, if he just outbraked himself or he was already trying something on Mikhail Makesh. Bartosz Groszek still defending from Karol Witke. Down the inside he went to prevent Karol Witke from overtaking him. And Tomáš Pekas, he has lost a lot of places. This is not good for his championship hopes. He came to Slovakia, having just retaken the lead in the championship back in Croatia. But now he was unlucky yesterday and he seems to be unlucky today as well. And he will lose more ground on Michal Makes. Michal Makes still slower than the leading Sebastian Steibel. So this is already starting to look really good for the Asset Race Star Program Protege, Sebastian Steibel. So Steibel in the lead from Makesh and Karklis. Karklis then, thanks to the mistake of Tomáš Pekas, is now on course to his second podium of the weekend. That would be a wonderful, wonderful debut. Tomáš Pekas now in a fight with Sanil Cehic and he has now dealt with his um, Bosnian uh, opponent so he's moving up one place. He scored one victory here in May earlier on this year but he is not going to score very much this weekend. Bartosz Groszek up to fourth after that incident Karol Witke still right on his rear wing. And Sebastian Steibel entering the last lap of the race now. Sebastian Steibel, he has been close a couple of times, but so far he has not really stood on the top step of the podium. Steibel, he was second twice actually here in Slovakia in May. That was a great weekend for him and he really made a good name for himself here in the DCR circles. But since then, something has always been lacking. He was on podium once more in Poland where he scored one third place in the race number two. But since then, His point tally was not really extending that much as was expected, but now as was expected, but now he is on course for a victory. It's still not going to be easy because Michal Makes is there with him. He is close, but Sebastian Steibel knows full well that Michal Makes has lots to lose now. And this is a great place for Michal Makes anyway, because he is second and he's got his championship rival. Tomáš Pekas all the way down in seventh. So these are very crucial points. Michal Makesh does not really need to win this one. It would be nice, of course, to win it before the maximum penalty, Brno. But Sebastian Steibel is probably going to hold on to this one. But I have now received very important news. Sebastian Steibel is not going to win this one. So really, I spotted it well at the race start. He really moved a little too soon Sebastian Steibel and that was a false start for which he will be given a 10 second penalty so once more he is gonna be robbed of victory through actually a fault of his own needs to be said but even though on the road he is going to cross the line first he is not going to take victory so actually it is now Michal Makesh on course for a race win Bartosz Groszek is there still holding off that pressure from Karol Witke. And now it is really important how much of a gap can Sebastian Steibel pull on everybody else. Sebastian Steibel entering the pit straight and across the line he goes to win it on the road.
but he will be demoted by 10 seconds after that false start. Michal Makesh coming home second, but he will take race victory thanks to the penalty for his opponent, Jonas Karklis, down in third, which will become second. Bartosz Groszek will be on podium because he is 8.7 seconds behind Steibel across the line, 8.8 .8 seconds for Karol Witka. So that was unbelievably close across the line between Groszek and Witka, 83 thousandths of a second between them. And let's see that again. Yeah, there was some motion. Yeah, yeah. There was actually no movement from Petr Cizek and Sanel Cehic for, for a good amount of time. But he did really move a little prematurely. Sebastian Steibel. So thank you guys for this replay that uh, helped us reveal that uh, false start done by Sebastian Steibel. And this will effectively drop Sebastian Steibel down to fifth. That means that uh, he will not score that desired first victory here. Michal Makes will be victorious from Jonas Karklis and Bartosz Grosje. And there is another penalty for car number three. It's 30 seconds for Giacomo Germandi, apparently. Giacomo Germandi finished ninth, so that will drop him all the way to the last. I don't really know for what right now, and cannot really confirm any further but anyway Sebastian Steibel has won it on the road but uh, apparently will be penalized Michal Makesh should then win this race and uh, even extend his championship lead over Tomáš Pekas and what a rotten bit of luck for Tomáš Pekas again and uh, this is helping Michal Makes massively because he's going to gain one extra place. That is seven extra points for him. But Tomáš Pekas, he is so far back that he will not benefit from that penalty of Sebastian Steibel. And he will remain seventh. Well, entering the season finale in Brno in two weeks' time, it will already be pretty hard for Tomáš Pekas. And let's not forget, both him and both Michal Makes will be penalized heavily for their success this weekend and in Brno that's going to be a tough luck for both of them because Slovakia ring yeah it's a high speed track but at least it's flat let's say excluding those uh, artificial undulations but Brno if you know Brno at least from Schwartz corner uh, returning back onto the start and finish straight that is a, a massive massive hill so those kilograms they will reveal themselves there. They, they will hurt a lot. So Michal Makesh, in the end, victorious from Jonas Karklis. Second podium of the weekend for Jonas Karklis. Hats off to him, a victory and a second place for the Lithuanian. Beautiful stuff on his debut. And then Bartosz Groszek, he should be third after that penalty for Sebastian Steibel. That was a interesting one. Uh, we're really glad that we saw Jarko Knigo walk away from his crash. That needs to be repeated. And, uh, well, it's going to be interesting in two weeks' time for the season finale in Brno. Until then, it's a warm goodbye, but not from this weekend uh, yet, because we will be back with GT Racing in just a couple of minutes.
Hello and welcome back to the Slovakia ring for the race number two when it comes to GT Sprint racing. We are back with the Slovakia ring round, round number five of the 2021 Asset Cup Series, the penultimate round of this year's championship here in Slovakia. This is the second time of the season that we have come to Slovakia, uh, as you may already know, because earlier on in May we were supposed to race in Austria at Red Bull Ring, but the COVID restrictions meant that that round had to be cancelled. So the Asset Cup Series joined forces with the European TCR and came here to Slovakia. And now they are here for the Slovakian Grand Prix race number five, or let's say um, round number five out of six. In two weeks time, we will be going to Brno, to the Czech Republic for the season finale. This is then the race number 10, effectively, because on each weekend we do two sprint races and one endurance. The endurance happened already yesterday. This is the season's calendar. We started the year in Hungary uh, in April, then uh, we went to Slovakia, Poland, Croatia, now back to Slovakia. And at the beginning of September we will be in Brno, the top of the season. Patryk Acirek ready in his Audi R8, pre uh, prepared by the Duck Racing Team. And there he is, Libor Milota. He was unlucky yesterday uh, for the endurance race as he collected some damage after a clash with Marcin Jedlinski in the sprint earlier on and could not take part in the endurance race in the afternoon. But now he is back, the car is ready and uh, he is again on the starting grid, just like Denis Vasek in his Lamborghini Huracan. That was driven by his father, Bolek Vasek, in the endurance race uh, in the late afternoon. And this is the car that we saw and didn't see, that we did see and didn't see yesterday, actually. It was the outright winner of the first GT Sprint, then uh, Christian Malcharek was also supposed to take part in the endurance race, but uh, technical trouble prevented him from doing that. But this time out, it is actually Jirko Malcharek behind the steering wheel of that Audi R8. Matej Pavlicek ready for the second sprint and also gearing up for the championship victory in the GT4 class in his KTM Expo GT4. Piotr Vera also on the starting grid. He will be taking part in the GT3 class and lines up sixth on the starting grid in his Mercedes AMG GT3 with good speed racing team. Trevor Racing has two cars on the grid, one in GT3 class, one in GT4 class. This is the BMW uh, M4 piloted by the Hungarian driver Ferenc Fica, also lining up on the starting grid. With Pecho, one of his mechanics, uh, by his hand there. Jacek Zielonka, ready to go, ready to race. Uh, this time out again in his radical SR8, lining up fifth on the starting grid. Here we go down to P15 on the grid and actually third place in the GTC class. That was the Porsche 911 uh, driven by Petr Bretska, car number 85. And this is Greg Gigo, the championship leader when it comes to the endurance racing. And he's taking part also in the sprint races. He is lining up in eighth on the grid and uh, fifth among the GT3s. Some TCR machines also ready. This is Zoran Kotramanovic. The car number 111 lines up 12th on the grid overall. 25 minutes uh, ahead of us. Needs to be said that the schedule is already a little out of shape. We were supposed to start the racing action much sooner uh, originally, but there were trouble earlier on 
and also if you have been watching with us the whole day then you know that also the DCR race needed to be red flagged after a big big crash of uh, Jarko Knego that's why only now we will be starting the second GT sprint race let's see the starting grid then Martin Jedlinski lines up on pole in his Mercedes AMG GT3 having set a blistering lap of 159.957 Josef Zaruba lines up alongside him in his Lamborghini Super Trofeo and uh, Josef Zaruba he is gonna start first in the GTC class on row number two that's Jirko Malcharek in the Audi R8 LMS not exactly GT3 he's running in the open class E1 plus 3.5 and alongside him Libor Milota as the second of the GT3s on the grid behind them Jacek Zielonka in fifth and Piotr Vera in sixth uh, Jacek Zielonka in the D5 class being the sole entry in his uh, sort of prototype radical Piotr Vera he is the third driver among the GT3s behind him uh, another duo of the GT3 machines, Stanislav Jedlinski and Gregor Zigo. Denis Vasek lines up ninth on the grid in his Lamborghini Huracan. He is second among the GTCs in that yellow and black Lamborghini Huracan. Alongside him on row number five, that is Petr Kacirek, another GT3 entry, the Audi R8. Adam Rzepecki in 11th alongside him Matej Pavlicek as uh, the first among the GT4s Matej Pavlicek managed to score another pole position on his way to the series title he is ahead of all the other GT4 cars them being Ferenc Fica and Alia Kolotz in the Mercedes AMG GT4 whom we saw just a couple of seconds back ready on the starting grid as well then Petr Bretska in the GTC class Porsche 911 right in front of Bodish Kalman, behind them Zoran Kotromanovic and Ivan Sentic and in 19th with his Nissan 350Z, Andrei Fekete. <laughs> the picture always know, knows exactly when to freeze, doesn't it? Okay, Marcin Edlinski on pole position, alongside him Josef Zaruba for the second sprint of the weekend. <laughs> and this is the R8 Audi. Uh, there is one absence, very notable absence actually, because we were supposed to have Stoffe Rossina on the grid as well, if I'm not mistaken. But there was a big problem in qualifying earlier on today because on that yellow Mercedes, um, the brake disc shattered, damaging the car in process and preventing it from starting in today's sprint. That's a beautiful shot, a Beamer and a Merck going head to head on the Slovakian track, both of them lining up on row number four, but actually taking third, uh, sorry, fourth and fifth place in the GT3 class. So the seven series Alpina goes away and takes with itself the whole field of course, we have a rolling start in the GT racing. So we are now commencing the formation lap here in Slovakia. 5,922 meters, 14 corners, a high speed track with a really nice flow. The track is over 20 meters wide on the start and finish straight, then it goes. Um, narrower in the on the rest of the track which is always uh, interesting for the first corner because actually through the first corner uh, the track narrows down by a few meters which means that if there are too many cars running alongside each other into the first corner inevitably there is going to be not enough space for some of them uh, on the exit of turn number one and then the notoriously difficult corner number two it doesn't look actually particularly difficult on the map it's just a really fast right-hander, but it can bite, as it showed us uh, some minutes back 
in the DCR race when uh, Jacques Ocnego had a really high speed crash. This is a big heavy braking into the third corner, actually going downhill over one of those uh, artificial crests. And then comes this tighty twisty snaking section, that is sector two. This is one of the most difficult parts of the track actually, uh, exiting this fast uh, S's. We are coming into turn number six, actually here through this section of the track. And it's difficult for that reason that uh, you're entering this area at a notable speed. Uh, you've got your wheels, the front wheels, uh, locked in and uh, steering actually, it's a cornering. So you're not going straight, but you have to do pretty heavy braking while still having some steering lock. And uh, of course, it is always really easy to lock up and uh, either spin or crash into somebody. Some drivers choose to take a really tight line and try to straighten their steering as much as they possibly can, having early apex, but really make sure that they brake properly into that corner. If you find yourself too much on the outside, because not many drivers actually use the outside line through there it's usually dirty that means that the grip is lower so if you're trying to if, if you're trying to take the outside line for the turn number six you might also find yourself locking up and uh, going straight ahead into the gravel this is then the back part of the track the back straight entering the never-ending right-hander that is the last corner of the track in uh, touring cars and GT cars it's usually a two apex corner at least but it's also really fast and uh, putting the aerodynamics of the cars to a real test and make no mistakes these cars are really fast approaching speeds of about 280 290 kilometers per hour before the first corner and we are ready for the rolling start and away we go it was a good start by Josef Zaruba in his Michanik into the first corner and the Audi R8 coming around the outside into the first corner Ooh, Martin Ilinski is extremely patient and extremely cautious into the first corner so he is now in fight with Libor Milota Jacek Zielonka had a really great start in his radical and he's already up into P3 and Jirko Malcharek is now taking the first place overall with his Audi R8 uh, having just overtaken uh, Josef Zaruba into the second corner. There they go Audi R8 in the lead from uh, Josef Zaruba and, uh, and uh, Jacek Zielonka. Then go the GT3s and Martin Ilinski is now trying to make some ground and he's overtaken Jacek Zielonka for third. Martin Edlinski leading the GT3 class now. Libor Milota trying to follow suit. It's getting really tight there between Milota and Zielonka. Not really sure if Zielonka saw Milota down the inside. I would like to see another shot of them. How that incident worked out. So it seems that Libor Milota managed to back out of that one. And... Uh, both of the drivers continuing in the race. Martin Edinsky now fighting hard and uh, he has claimed another spot as he has now overtaken Josef Zaruba. Up into second, leading the GT3 class. There's a 
of Zaruba remaining in the lead of the C class, despite being overtaken by Martin Edlinski on the opening lap of the race. Then there's the Radical Vjacic Zielonka followed by Libor Milota. We have Piotr Vera then in P6 overall from Stanislav Jedlic Jedlinski. Then there are Adam Zapetsky and Gregor Zigo. Gregor Zigo lost a place after, after the start. Petr Kaciruk remains 10th. Denis Vasek also lost a place and dropped down to 11th. And among the GT4s, it is actually Ferenc Fica now in the lead as Maciej Pavlicek lost some ground at the start and is now 15th overall and second in the class, fighting it out with Alia Kolot, who was only seven tenths of a second behind him across the line, entering lap number two. So there must have been a fight between the two. Um, the GT4 Mercedes being somewhat stronger down the straights but the agility and the nimbleness of uh, the KTM that's what plays to its uh, to its hands in the tight and twisty second sector that's the one that the car likes the most and uh, that's where it gains massively on its rivals Martin Jedlinski showing some great performance, some great speed. And he is reeling in Jirko Malcharek. Jirko Malcharek has just set the fastest lap of the race to 846. But he didn't really keep it for long. Martin Jedlinski immediately beat him with a time of 201.685, so 1.2 seconds faster than that previous lap and he is now under, under one second behind Malcharek. Zaruba in the meantime is third. In his Lamborghini, he has overtaken Petr Kacirek. For 10th overall, but it is not a fight in the same class. And Martin Edlinski getting ever so closer to Jirko Malcharek. He was actually pretty slow on the opening lap. And actually, we need to say, we need to say, I'm um, really cautious on that opening corner. He has already had trouble this weekend as he had contact with Libor Milota yesterday so he tried to avoid any similar things today that means that uh, Martin Edlinski lost a couple of places at the start but he is now gradually overtaking them one by one and uh, the race lead is now lying right ahead of him for the last corner taking a late apex then going wide and then turning back in and having second apex a little later on and using as much as uh, or going as wide as possible on the end down the pit straight they go 202.477 by Malcharek 202.447 by Martin Edlinski. So just three hundredths of a second apart from each other. 203.2 for Zaruba, 206.0 for Libor Melota. There is Gregor Zigo. Making a short work of Adam Zapetsky finally. Denis Vasek does the same thing. Denis Vasek shared the duties behind the steering wheel of that BMW M6 yesterday in the endurance race as his father drove the yellow and black uh, Lamborghini in the endurance race, all by himself actually.
Adam Řefecký is now holding off Petr Kačírek. Martin Edlinsky, who is attempting to overtake Jirko Malcharek for the outright first place in the race. He is also the leader of the sprint race series. Having scored 100 points already, and actually only taking victories. He won the opening race in Hungary, the race number one of the weekend. He didn't score any points in the race number two. Then he scored two doubles here in Slovakia and in Poznań. Then he missed the round, or skipped the round. But he's back now in Slovakia. Martin Edlinski actually won yesterday among the GT3s. Gregor Žigo was second. Petr now trying to overtake Adam Zapetsky into the first corner. He went a little wide. Halfway through the corner, but he manages a better traction, better exit. He will remain on his position that he's now newly gained. Martin Jedlinski therefore leading the championship with 100 points. Gregor Žigo 75 and a half after yesterday's race. Adam Zepetsky is third with 60 and a half points to his name. Piotr Vera fourth with 60. Then there's Stanislav Jedlinski. And David Vršecký, who scored a victory in the second race in Hungary earlier on in the season. But since probably the Gira is uh, racing uh, with the GT4 version of the AMG GT Mercedes. And there is Martin Edlinski, the championship leader. Still second. He closed the gap on Malcharek really quickly. But, as is often said in motorsport, to catch up and to overtake are two completely different things. So this might take some time. Of course, both of them will want to avoid any contact. Pretty expensive. And this is the fight for the lead in the GT4 class, Matej Pavlicek. Going down the inside on Ferenc Fica in the second sector. And he is now really exploiting the strengths of his KTM. This is the BMW M6 driven by Gregor Gigo. I would like to see the end of that uh, scrap between Pavlicek and uh, Fica. They seem to keep on battling. KTM against the M4 BMW. This is Gregor Žigo ahead of Denis Vašek. Matej Pavlíček leads the standings um, of the sprint series among GT4s. He's got 62 and a half points to his name. Ferenc Vita is the second. The worst result is crossed out. So, although Matej Pavlicek has already scored victory yesterday, and therefore you would assume that he does not need to score any good result today, uh, it's still beneficial for him if he beats Ferenc Fica today, because Ferenc Fica was second yesterday. And if Ferenc Fica were to win today, it would mean that yesterday's second place would be crossed out as the worst result. And that would keep him, leave him with more points for today's victory. But if Matej Pavlicek manages to stay ahead of Ferenc Fica and actually overtake him in the first place, then he will definitely uh, rob him of some points. So that's the mission that he is now on. And it seems to be becoming a beautiful battle in the GT4 field. We have already had lots of fun in the GT4s in Croatia where Matij Pavlicek enjoyed a beautiful battle with David Vršecký, both of them enjoying it thoroughly. And uh, now the same is happening here between Pavlicek and Fica.
So Fritza retook the lead in the class, having been overtaken by Dominic on the previous lap. And now Fritza is still ahead, is again ahead. White flags being shown. We may be soon lapping one of the slower cars. Ooh, and it's really slow. That's Andre Feketa in the Nissan 350Z. And he seems to be in some sort of technical trouble because he's just well, driving at a snail pace, crawling pace. As he's trying to get himself um, back to the pit lane. So through the second corner they go, over the hill, Ferenc Fitzer going defensive, under braking, into the third corner. And now, can he do it round the outside? Matej Pavlice, can he use that KTM to its maximum potential? Whoa, that's a beautiful scrap there between Pavlice and Fitzer. Fitzer's definitely not giving up. And they are now going side by side through the SS corners. Oh, we'd like to see how this ends. Round the outside again goes Matej Pavlice and into the GT4 class lead. What a move! That was a nice one. That was a really nice one. They went side by side through third, fourth, fifth and sixth corners, basically. And uh, managed to stay side by side, managed to give each other room. That was nice, full of respect. And hats off to that, for, to, to both of them actually, how they tackled this fight. And in the class lead goes Matej Pavlicek. As they were fighting, there is also Alia Kolots trying to get herself in the mix. In the meantime, Gregor Zhigo having a fight of his own, of his own, with Stanislav Jedlinski. He took his place round the outside in the first corner. Still, this is the battle for the outright victory. Martin Jedlinski remains first in the GT3 class, but he is on the tail of that Audi R8 and he wants that outright win. Just over nine minutes left from this race. And Martin Edlinski is hungry for more. Well, is it really there? That fight left hander. And now both of them are opening the taps of their machines. Fitzer in his M4 BMW. Still trying to follow Matej Pavlicek and stay ahead of, uh, of uh, Alia Kolotz. Let's see what times they did last time out. So, uh, in the battle for the lead, Jirko Malcharek did 204.0 on that previous lap. Martin Ilinski did 204.2. So let's say one and a half tenths of a second slower. Matej Pavlicek, after that uh, fight with uh, Ferenc Fitzer, did 213.9. Ferenc Fitzer 215.8. Alia Kolot 216.1. And Matej Pavlicek is now through and goes ahead of another driver. This time it was Bodish Kalman in his GTC class Porsche 911. There is the B8 overall and ahead of Stanislav Jedlinski. He has been following Gregor Zhigo pretty much all day long now. Well, <laughs> all race long, shall we say. And whoever gets overtaken by Gregor Zhigo gets then overtaken shortly by Denis Vasek as well. Piotr Vera in his Mercedes. 
and he is currently sixth overall and third in the GT3 class behind Martin Jedlinski and Libor Milota. Libor Milota doing really well. He was also on course for a good result yesterday. Back to the fight for the lead of the race. Martin Jedlinski in his Olymp Racing Day Glow Mercedes still shadowing that Audi. He did close the gap right down pretty quickly and uh, showed us that he can be over one second per lap faster. Oh, as a big crash! And Piotr Vera has now taken out Andre Fekete whom we had seen earlier on having trouble going down the back straight and now both are ending up in the gravel of the last corner that was a big misunderstanding presumably Piotr Vera was about to lap the Nissan but the Nissan closed the door on him let's see that again yep. That's a big misunderstanding. Maybe Piotr Vera was already disappearing in the blind spot of the rearview mirror of Andre Fekete. And probably even misjudged the speed difference. That's always the danger when you allow different categories to race together. And that's the bit of racecraft that you need to possess on both sides actually. No matter if you're the one who's overtaking or the one who is being overtaken, you just need to mind the speed difference. And uh, these two cars, those are really, really very different beasts indeed. And, well, both of them kind of misjudged the situations. I believe that Ben Piotr Vera thought already that uh, Andre Fekete sees him and is letting him through, but then. As Andre Fekete started to shut the door, it dawned back on Piotr Vera that uh, that gap was actually disappearing. But that's the situation. That's, that's when you are already committed to dive down the inside. And if you do that and you are braking hard and as late as possible, then there is really no way out of that situation. And uh, you can just watch the door being shut and and there's nothing more you can do about that. So that was a contact, and it seems to end both drivers' races. Which is a great deal of shame for Piotr Vera, because he was on course for the third place in the class. So he was on course for a podium. Uh, lots to discuss between the two now, probably. Or maybe it will be a pretty, fairly short discussion. Let's see. Martin Jedlinski still shadowing Jirko Malcharek with three and a half minutes left on the clock. Gregor Zhigo and Denis Vasek. They are actually from different teams, but they uh, share the garage together Also share the share the car for the endurance race, and uh, this now <laughs> looks like they simply decided to have a nice Sunday drive together. So they are following each other through this race and uh, overtaking people together, as in the distance you may have seen um, the car of Piotr Vera being. Uh, towed away after that clash with um, Andre Fekete. So let's get back to the fight 
for the victory. And uh, it's actually no longer a fight as such because Mirko Malcharek has pulled away. Or maybe Martin Jedlinski has dropped back because there's already two and a half seconds between the two. They are now fighting through the cars that they need to lap. So blue flag situations here and there. That's never easy. But it seems that Ilko Malcharek has been doing a slightly better job at that. And pulling away from Martin Jedlinski. Either way, nothing's going to change on the positions in their respective classes. Martin Jedlinski is still on course for another sprint race GT3 victory. Less than a minute to go. Ferenc Vitar already even away from sight. Matej Pavlicek, who is now comfortably in the GT4 class lead. So we are now entering the last lap of the race. Martin Jedlinski running across the line. Still having the Audi R8 in his sights, but he hasn't really come up with anything. He didn't really find any overtaking opportunity. And that means that he is remaining second overall this the GT3 class. Presumably, he saw that it's not going to be that easy to overtake the Audi. He just backed off out of it. Because... Uh, Yes, that would be for an outright victory, but wouldn't change anything in any of the championships, and it would actually be an unnecessary risk. And that's not something that you really want on a Sunday afternoon before the weekend's wrap up. No need to bring the car home in pieces. Much better to keep it intact, really. Time is up already, so we are completing the last lap of Sunday's racing action uh, for the English broadcast. Well, Martin Jedlinski is still trying, so he has not really given up on anything. So I beg your pardon for that, because Martin Jedlinski has now been several fast sectors. And closing the gap down on Jirko Malcharek. Not really sure if there's going to be an overtaking attempt, but they are right with each other right now. And there is another part of the lap on the TCRs, one of the Coopers. So, what is going to happen right into the last corner, really? Is there going to be a dive down the inside? No. Martin Edlinski is simply too far back. And there are also yellow flags for the beached. Nissan, so they are now entering the start and finish straight and across the line they go. Jirko Malcharek taking an outright victory, second for the Audi R8 this weekend. But Martin Jedlinski victorious in the GT3 sprint, taking yet another victory this season. And that should really help him wrap up the title, I believe. Or at least get really, really much, much closer to that. We'll of course need to see how the crossing out of the result goes. And actually also what happens in two weeks' time in Brno. So we are finishing Josef Zaruba winning the GTC class. Third overall on the road. Libor Milota taking second in GT3. Jacek Zielonka is now also finishing his race in P5. He is alone in his category, so there is nobody else to fight with. Gregor Zigo, P6 and taking third in the GT3 class after that uh, crash of Piotr Vera. Still some way from the finish is now Gregor Zigo.
is Vašek, also across the line. There they go, Gregor Žigo, P6, Denis Vašek, P7, but for Gregor Žigo it is a podium among GT3s. For Denis Vašek it's the second place in the GTC class. Stanislav Jedlinski finishing fourth as a GT3 driver, Petr Kacirek there in P5 among the GT3s. We we're also waiting for Adam Rzepecki. Matej Pavlicek, he has already won the GT4 class, he's already finished his race, so it is yet another victory and further points taken away from Ferenc Vica and that brings Matej Pavlicek ever closer to that desired title in the GT4 class. That should also be a wrap-up for him, so hats off to all the RTR project and the KTM machines. Matej Pavlicek winning his class yet again. Petr Brecka in P12. And actually third place in the G sorry, fourth place in the GTC class, third goes to Adam Zapetsky. As you are now watching the race highlights with Josef Zaruba leading momentarily on the opening lap. Bodish Kalman uh, fourth. In the GTC class, Ferenc Vica second among the GT4s, Alia Kolodz third, and then Zoran Kotrmanovic and Ivan Sentic. And these are the two retirements of this race, Piotr Vera and Andrei Fekete. And there's the, then there's also one DNS for Stofirosina due to the shattered uh, brake disc from earlier on today. And uh, with that, it is also the wrap-up for the round five of the 2021 Asset Cup Series here in Slovakia. Thank you very much for watching and we are not going to have to wait that long for the next round. In two weeks' time we will be racing again, but for the last time this season in Brno at the Automotodrom Brno Masaryk Racing Circuit. So uh, a couple of, a couple of uh, hundred kilometers uh, further west from where we are racing now, not that far away. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for being and staying with us. And uh, we really hope that you enjoy the Asset Cup series just as much as we do. And we will be looking forward to seeing and hearing you uh, again in two weeks' time in Brno. But until then, it is a very warm goodbye. <laughs>